that God can heal a broken hand but you are pretending to believe that somebody can die decompose and then one day some trumpet will sound somewhere and the dead in Christ shall rise you may be living in a world of imagination I tell you if you can't believe in God working today you cannot believe in the things of the last days the sky opening and you seeing Jesus standing at the right hand of the throne of God is possible the thing about God is you can easily retire from believing God and be sitting in church and you don't know you've lost your faith I believe in medical practice I, I believe in medication I believe in the work of doctors but when doctors are performing at that level and pharmacists are performing at that level and science is performing at that level it means God must perform at this other level which is above what the scientists can do may God give you a sign where there would be something you could easily do yourself but you say God I want to stand still and I want to see the salvation of the Lord and you see the Lord perform it the Bible said uh, now when all the people were baptized, Luke chapter 3 and the verse number 21 and 22. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. Everybody say the heaven was opened. And I pray that the heaven over your life will be opened today. Your response will cause the heaven to open. I said tonight, I pray that the heaven over your life will be opened. The Bible said the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descended in the bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. Everybody say a voice came from heaven. I pray that today you will hear a voice. <laughs> when the heavens open, something happens. And one of the things that happens when the heavens open is that you will hear a voice. May you hear a voice. Until you hear a voice from heaven, your condition will remain the same. If you hear a voice from heaven, the condition will change. Tonight, may you hear a voice from heaven. In this building, you will hear a voice from heaven. And when you go home and you are on your own, you will hear a voice from heaven. If you hear that voice, something will change. A voice from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. I call hearing a voice from heaven the word rain. Yesterday, I spoke to us about speaking the word. But today, I'm talking about the word of God coming to you from heaven. Because until the word of God comes to you from heaven, how are you going to speak the word? So the word of God must come to you from heaven. It must descend upon you from heaven. And when that word of God descends upon you from heaven, you speak it, then you get your results. The Bible said he sent his word, healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Where does the word come from? The word of God comes from heaven. The thing is that people, whether we like it or not, you always hear something. You can always hear something, number one, from within yourself. Your mind will always tell you something. Your feelings will always tell you something. Circumstances will always tell you something. So you are hearing the word from within yourself. Your feelings, your mind, your traditions. Something in your mind will constantly try to talk to you. I pray that today your mind will be silent. I pray that your feelings will be silent. Because your feelings have been talking to you for a long time. 
and your mind has been talking to you for a long time but I pray that today you will hear another voice and that voice you are hearing will not be the voice of your mind it will not be the voice of your feeling but it will be the voice of God from above so you are always hearing something from within your mind number two you are likely to be hearing a voice from around what are people saying what are the circumstances saying so you are listening to circumstances and listening to people one day jesus asked his disciples he said who do men say that i the son of man am they said some said you are john the baptist some said you are elijah some said you are one of the prophets some even said you are john the baptist and he said by you who do you say i am peter said you are the christ the son of the living god he said flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you but my father who is in heaven so you can always hear things around or you can hear circumstances for example you could decide you are coming to this meeting and you'll be in the traffic and the traffic traffic will be so thick that the circumstances around you will tell you go back home you just turn your car and start going back home so you hear from within you hear from circumstances then another source from which you can hear is from hell where demons can talk to you paul talked about the doctrine of demons i remember last week i was ministering in in Accra, Ghana, and at a certain point, a gentleman fell in front of me, and the demons in him were talking. They were saying things like, they won't go. They will not go. And I rebuked them, and I said, they have to go. Finally, they said they will leave. Today, I heard my wife laughing loudly on the phone. After that, I asked, what were you laughing? She said, a friend of hers called her from Accra, Ghana, and said, she was in the meeting when I was talking to the demons. And when I cast out the demons, I didn't tell the demons where to go. But she knows that Jesus told the demons to go into the sea. But I didn't tell the demons where to go. So she decided she's leaving the building before they come and enter her. So she ran out of the building. She went to buy something to eat. When she was biting the thing, something told her, what about if the demons entered that thing she was about to eat? Now that, 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 that is comic. So now, but I was just talking to you about demons speaking through the person. So there are some of the ways you feel sometimes. It is demons talking to you. Demons can tell you, resign that job. Demons can tell you, run away from Nigeria. Demons can tell you, kill yourself. Demons can tell you, life is meaningless, life is over. But the Bible said, when all the people were baptized, Jesus also being baptized, he heard a voice from the superior source. Every other source of hearing is an inferior source. Hearing from your mind is inferior. Hearing from around is inferior. Hearing from hell, that one is not just inferior, it is bad. But the best way to hear is to hear a voice from heaven. And I'm praying that God, somebody today, will hear a voice from heaven. The voice from heaven may be a very simple thing sometimes it can also be a complicated thing i tell you the voice of the voice from heaven can be very simple like you want the walls of jericho to come down the voice from heaven can be very simple go around the walls of jericho seven times seven days and on the seventh day go around seven times that one is not easy it's difficult going around the walls of Jericho seven times, seven days, on the seventh day, go around seven times. No, assuming you are told, walk around Ikoi. Seven days, they give you the perimeter and they say walk around. And on the seventh day, they tell you walk around Ikoi seven times. I'm sure whichever prophet gave you that prophecy, you tell him to carry his prophecy, go back to Ghana. Or go back to um, Meduguri or wherever he's coming from. Any place that is far, he should just go. It's very difficult. Or you are there and you hear a voice. Abraham, take your only son Isaac, 
whom you love. Go up to a mountain, I will show you, and offer him as a sacrifice. Immediately you say, I bind you, foul spirit. You demonic voice, I take authority over you. God is not a killer, he's a giver of life. That is the way you start reasoning. It cannot be God. So sometimes, the voice from heaven can be very difficult. Sometimes too, the voice from heaven can be very simple. Like Naaman the leper, who has leprosy all his life. All God told him is that, get up and go and dip yourself in the river Jordan seven times. Now that one is very easy. Bam, 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 seven. And it's, you are healed. Like yesterday I told you, take something that is new and bring it to church. That is a very easy instruction. How many of you brought something? Yeah, that's, that's a very easy instruction. Very easy. And sometimes that one too can be too easy for some people to believe. Like the wine is finished and he said, fill the water pots with water. Too easy. We are looking for wine. The man is talking about water. And Mary told him, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. I pray that when you hear the voice from heaven, whether it's a complicated one, whether it's a simple one, may you have the capacity to hear it in the name of Jesus. I call it the word rain. The very fact that the word of God is constantly raining upon us. And the good thing about the word of God raining upon us is it can come from without. Sorry, it can come from without. That means it can come from above or the Holy Ghost within you can reign the word of God within your spirit. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 2 and the verse number 27 that the anointing which you have received of him abides in you and you have no need that another man teach you. But that the same anointing teaches you all things and it's truth and it's no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. So the anointing within you is constantly teaching you. I want to <coughs> tonight dwell on Isaiah chapter 55 from the verse number 8. Isaiah is talking about the reign of the word of God and what the reign of the word of God can do in your life. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, maketh it to bring forth and bud, that he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Somebody shout an amen. amen. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are thoughts of evil wickedness, sickness, death, destruction, pain, agony, anguish, perpetual destruction are your thoughts. But my thoughts are the thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Therefore, anybody in this building or around who has programmed evil in your mind, we deprogram the evil and pray in the name of Jesus that the thoughts of good and of peace will take over from the thoughts of evil in your mind. The evil in your mind does not come from God because God does not give evil. That thing that is inside you, in your mind, telling you kill yourself, it's not, it's not the good that is coming from God. The Bible said, every good gift and every perfect gift come from above and it comes from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness or shadow of turning. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. 
You have a challenge. That and the challenge is telling you you will be destroyed. And your ways are that because of the challenge you have, go and steal some money. My ways are not your ways. Your marriage is difficult. Your thought is that this marriage is killing me. But God said, I don't give killer mar marriage. Your ways are that because the marriage is difficult, walk out of it. God said, my ways are not your ways. You've lost your job. Ten years. Five years. Your thought is, I will never be employed. And your ways are, let me commit suicide. After all, life doesn't mean anything. God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And your ways are not your way, my ways. Because whenever you have certain thoughts in your mind, the thoughts put pressure on you to devise a way. God said, in the first place, your thoughts are not my thoughts. And the ways you have devised to come out of your thoughts and your lifestyle, even the ways are not my ways. He said, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I pray today that God will give you a higher thought. May God give you a higher way. Not only better, but higher. Not only nicer, but higher. May God's higher thoughts. Am I talking to somebody at all? Your thoughts are lower thoughts. Your thoughts are backward thoughts. Your ways are lower ways. Your ways are backward ways. But may God give you a higher thought, a higher way. In the name of Jesus, the Bible said he's a better way, a more excellent way. May the Lord give you better, higher, bigger, greater ways and thoughts. Receive it in the name of Jesus. After today, I see you thinking differently. I see you devise a different way because God has showed you a better way. Look at Peter. Look, look at Peter. We have toiled all night. We have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, we will let down the nets. Peter's occupation is a fisherman. The frustration is that he has fished the whole night and he got nothing. The way Peter could be blessed was to toil. The man toiled all night and got nothing. Because many of us think we can only be blessed when we toil. Everybody say toil. No, we labor. We labor. For example, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, some of you will be shocked that your biggest breakthrough this week, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, will be if tomorrow you decided not to work. Stay in the house rather and pray. Listen, there's a story I've been telling. One day my wife got up in the morning and told me she's going to school. And I told her, okay, go, I'll be waiting for you. She left around 8 o'clock in the morning. I then got up from the bed around 9 and I said I was going to wash down and go to the church and look at some work and come back. When I got up and looked towards the door, Pastor Wally, there was no door. Everything was a wall. White all around me. It's, it's, our wall is sandstone color. Everything was sandstone color. No door. No, you, you couldn't see position for door. I thought my eyes were deceiving me. So I walked towards the direction which I knew the door was. I began to touch and I couldn't feel the door. There was nothing to open and go out. I went back to the bed. This time, when I looked towards the door, all I saw was something like a cloud, a mist, and it had covered the whole of the wall area all around the room. And the Lord told me, he said, I want you to stay indoors and pray and meditate the whole day. You are not walking out of this room. I stayed in the room for 24 hours. My wife came in later in the day, opened the door. I asked her, I said, Pearl, how did you come in? She said, I came through the door. I said, well, I couldn't find the door the whole day. Listen, people, 
the God we serve is real. The realm of the supernatural is real. So here is Peter. We have toiled all night and we've taken nothing. But at thy word, we will let down the net. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus just preached from the boat. And then he told Peter, he said, Peter, launch out into the deep. Just, just move the boat a little bit. When he moved the boat, he said, now, let down your net for the draw. Daytime is not the best time to catch the fish. The night is the best time. But I'm telling you, when the word of God moves, it doesn't matter whether the position is right. The time is right. It doesn't matter whether there's opposition or there's no opposition. You will get a harvest. I pray in the name of Jesus. Reason why you are still where you are is not because things are difficult. Reason is because you have not heard from God yet. The day you hear from God, there will be no difficulty. If you hear from God, every resistance will give way. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. As the rain cometh down from heaven and returneth not hither, returneth not hither. I was reading this scripture last night. As the rain cometh down from heaven and does not return hither. As the rain comes down from heaven and does not return hither. As the rain comes down from heaven and does not return hither. As the rain comes down from heaven. The rain is coming down. The rain is not going backwards. The rain is coming towards you. It's not going away from you. I pray henceforth. I used to hear the prophets of old. And they said, and the word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord came to me. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the principality power that has resisted the word of God from coming to you. I see the word of God coming to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The word of God is coming. And no principle principality, no power, no prince of Nigeria, no principality of Africa can stop the word of God from coming to you. I see the word coming to take you out of sickness. I see the word of God coming to take you out of destruction. I see the word of God coming to take you out of bondage. I see the word of God coming to take you out of sorrow and misery. The word of God is coming as the rain comes down from heaven and does not return hither but watereth the earth. Watereth the earth. Watereth the earth means that the word of God, when the word of God comes upon your life from an open heaven, the word of God will change the conditions. When the earth is watered, it means conditions are changed to make fruitfulness possible. I pray that your body will be watered. Even your womb will be watered. If you are a woman or a man, believe in God for the fruit of the womb. May the water of the word of God prepare your womb and prepare your body in the name of Jesus. Maybe you are saying your womb is too old. Your body is too old. They've gone on retirement. May the water of the word of God bring them out of retirement. Come on, receive it in the name of Jesus. When the water falls on the earth, the earth is conditioned to become fruitful. Water the earth. It means puts the earth in the right condition for fruitfulness and for increase and for multiplication. I see the water of the word of God in your house, in your business, in your ministry. It is being prepared for increase. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Anything that is dry in your life, I see it becoming wet. Whenever they planted things in the thing, ah, it never grew. Whenever they planted things in your business, in your life, in your ministry, when they plant a seed in your life, it never produced results. But now, the water of the word of God is coming upon your life. Come on, say, I am fertile soil. Say, I am fertile soil. Say, my house is fertile soil. 
My business is fertile soil. My church is fertile soil. My land is fertile land. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your land is a watered garden. Your land is a watered place. Anytime now they plant a seed, your life will become fruitful because you are a watered life. May your life receive water. In the name of Jesus, they used to call your life a desert, but I see the desert becoming a water the land they used to call your life a wilderness but i see water in the wilderness i see way in the wilderness come on shout a yes and press but water the earth and when it waters the earth it causes it to Bring forth and bud. The word of God makes your life fruitful and bud. No matter where you are, what you need is the word of God. When the word of God comes into your life, it will become fruitful and bud. That he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. When rain comes upon your life, you get seed to sow and bread to eat. I remember a gentleman came to a meeting in Accra, Ghana, and decided to sow a seed of nearly $2,000. And he's my friend, so he sent me a text. And in the text he said, Daddy, I committed myself to sow the seed of the $2,000, but the money is an investment account. I have to wait for the investment to mature, then I take the money and sow the seed. And I sent a text back to him. I said, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and do what you are supposed to do and um, just give yourself time. It doesn't matter. Later on, they gave me a report on the people who had redeemed their pledges. And they said the gentleman had paid his money. And I told my accounts director, I said, it's a lie. The man sent me a personal text and said he would do this within a week or two weeks and not now. Then the gentleman sent me another message and said, Daddy, I didn't know how it happened, but I thought I was going to do it through the investment account. But by the grace of God, some money just appeared and I have paid the money in dollars instead of in Ghana cities. So I paid off the pledge. Any seed you have to sow, May God give you the seed. And I see some of you in the kingdom of God, you will sow some of the seed nobody has ever sown around you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I, I told my wife this evening, I said, Pearl, I'm still waiting for people to walk to me and sow seed of $1 million. You, you know what? I told her that the vision is bigger. The vision God has given us is bigger than the finances that are coming into the kingdom. No, the finances that are coming are very small. And it's not the fault of the people. It is because the people don't have that seed to sow. I pray that your hand shall be like Abraham's hand. Who said, I have lifted up my hands to the Almighty, the possessor of heaven and earth. As you lift up your hand today, may this hand in your lifetime sow a seed of one million dollars. Ten million dollars. If you must sow a seed of one million dollars, it means God will give you one hundred million dollars and one billion dollars. I pray in the name of Jesus, may God position you to sow incredible seed. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, the ability to sow seed does not depend on your job. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And he said, as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and does not return hither, but water the earth, and make it into bud, and bring forth fruit, that he may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. 
It means the word of God is what gives the seed. And the word of God is what gives you the bread to eat. Everybody say the word of God gives seed. Seed does not come from inheritance from your father. Seed does not come from the work you do. I'll I tell you, look at me, look at me. Some of the seed God wants to, you to sow in life. Your salary can never sow that seed. For example, if God tells you right now, sow a seed of $20,000. How is your salary going to give you $20,000? How many millions of naira is that? You need about 10 Ghana must go to come here. Your job cannot give you that seed. The word of God from heaven will give you that seed. Lift up your hand in the name of Jesus. May the word of God take over from your job. May the word of God take over from your employment. Ay, 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 ay. When the word of God came to Mary, she said, how can these things be? Seeing I know not a man. Receive the word that will put a seed in your hand and the word that will put bread in your mouth. So the word of God gives you a seed and the word does not give you only the seed but the word of God also gives you bread. The Bible said that he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be the word of God gives seed to the sower and gives bread to the eater. Receive the seed to sow. Everybody shout an amen. amen. Now, you know, you know, Pastor Wale, what one thing I love is the detail, the accuracy, the design, and the style. When God is crafting, engineering, or architecturing his work. You know, it's like you, may, you will never see a building and the floor is on top of the roof. The building is always positioned with the floor here and the roof over your head. So when he says that he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, it means God's initial purpose or first purpose in giving you money or provision is to sow a seed and number two, give you bread to eat. But many people put their bread first. For example, if I walked up to you now and gave you 100,000 naira, you may think about going to buy a bag of rice first before you think about what to give as a seed. But the Bible is saying, when you get it, the first thing you should do is to think about the seed. After the seed, you think about the bread. Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. May you receive a breakthrough. I said, may you receive a breakthrough. May the heavens over your head open. And may God pour out a blessing upon your life. I want somebody to clap your hands and shout as you are clapping your hands. May this simple action produce a miracle in your life. I didn't say stop. Clap your hands. Add a shout to the clap. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise. That he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. When the heavens open, bread comes to the eater. When the heavens open, bread will come to the eater. A life in which your job is the thing that brings bread to you can be a very miserable life. A 
a life in which your job is the thing that brings bread to you can be a miserable life. A life in which your job has to provide the car you drive can be a miserable life. A life in which your job determines the house in which you live can be a miserable life. A life in which until you work, you cannot eat can be a miserable life. But I pray that God will take you to a higher life. I am not saying don't work, but I read in the scriptures that my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He said, bring in the tithe. There, there is a scripture. Christians hate it. As soon as you quote it, they get angry. Malachi 3 10. Bring in the offerings and the tithes. And prove me now here with and see. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, say that you have no room enough to receive it. As soon as you quote the scripture, the believers get angry because they think you are coming for their tithe. Bring in the tithes. Prove me now here with They are angry. And they say the rest of the verse, we don't even want it. But the rest of the verse says, prove me now here with and see. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, may God open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Your blessing is not in the hand of your boss. After all, your boss himself, how much does he have? May heaven take over the business of providing your need. When Jesus prayed, the Bible said the heaven was open. Some of you think bread, food, money are not important to God. Listen, when Jesus, the heavens opened over him, before he prayed for the sick, before he cast out devils, before he performed a miracle, he went into the wilderness. Get him for 40 days and 40 nights. After the temptation, when the devil now came, after the fasting, when the devil came to Jesus to tempt him, the first temptation was not fall down and worship me. The first temptation was not cast yourself down and the angels will bear you up in their hands. The first temptation was command this stone to be turned into bread. Because the devil knew that a hungry man or a hungry man is susceptible to temptation. So if you want to tempt somebody and succeed, make sure you keep him hungry first. So the devil now came to the hungry man and said, command this stone to be turned into bread. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. And man of God, I never understood that scripture. I used to think it was one of two things. Bread, stone, stone, bread. So you don't live by bread alone. But by every word. So I used to think you have to choose between the bread and the, and the, and the stone. The Lord told me, and this one is the Lord who told me. The Holy Ghost told me. He said, nobody has told you this before, but I want to show you a secret. I said, why? He said, the reason I said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth. You see, I didn't say man shall not live by bread because man indeed lives by bread. But I said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Because inside the mouth, inside the word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord is the bread. That means when you get, now, man shall not live by this water alone. In other words, this water cannot be contained in vacuum. 
This water cannot be suspended in the air. This water must be contained in a container. And the container that contains the word is this bottle. So man shall not live by this water alone, but by the bottle. Because by the time you get the bottle, the water will be in the bottle. So man shall not live by bread alone. The bread does not come on its own. The bread is in the word. So when God spoke the word and said, let grass appear, grass appeared. Let trees appear, trees appeared. When he said, let there be elephants and zebras and let there be camels. They appeared because all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Your money is in the word. Your house is in the word. Your food is in the word. Your water is in the word. Your bank account is in the word. Receive the word of God and everything is in the word. Come and clap your hands and scream. So Solomon said, Give me wisdom and give me knowledge. And the wisdom and the knowledge was the wisdom and the knowledge of the word of God. God says, Solomon, you know what? By choosing wisdom and knowledge, riches, wealth, honor, and everything is in them. I pray, may the word of God make you superior to anybody that has money. I pray in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to a millionaire. I'm talking to a billionaire. From today, in the name of Jesus, may money begin to come to you. Houses begin to come to you through the word of God. Come on, scream it and praise God. Thank you. But listen to Jesus. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in it, on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father who is in heaven. So when you have the open heaven, our Father who is in heaven, your will be done. What is the first will? Give us this day our daily bread. Before, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And that's because, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes when you have no daily bread, it is very difficult to forgive. I'm telling you, most of the people who are very angry in church and they are critics, you examine why they are critics and they are very angry, you will finally come to daily bread. Sometimes I pray a prayer in the church, I say, Father, Bless the church members. Number one, so that you receive glory. Number two, so that their needs will be met. Number three, so that the work of God will be done. Number four, bless them so that they leave me alone to enjoy my own. Come on, give a big clap offering to Jesus. Because I'm telling you, people that are broke, even somebody's hairstyle can make them angry. Look at the way they come to church, changing their hairstyle every week. Is the hairstyle sitting on your head? What I don't like about her is the height of her high heels. Are the high heels sitting on your nose? Why, why is that a problem to you? When you are broke, you can find problem with everybody. So give us this day our daily bread so that we will find it easy to forgive people. Who sin against us? For example, if another lady took your fiancée and after two years you got a better man to marry, you will forgive her easily. But if she took your fiancée and after 10 years you are still sitting there with nobody, you will remain bitter for a long time. I pray that God will supply all your need so that you leave others alone to enjoy their blessing. Come and clap your hands and scream like your voice is your stack. Listen, may the heaven over your head begin to open. Psalm 78 verse 22. Psalm 78. Let me read from verse number 23. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and he had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them the corn of heaven, men did eat angels' food and he sent them meat to the foe. Ah, yeah. Today I was walking about in the room and I said, ah, ah. So men 
ate angels' food. The manna was the food of angels. Human beings ate angels' food. May you eat the food of senators. I see you eating in Aso Rock. Is that how you call it? You will go there and eat. Listen, those of you go to Britain every time and all you are eating is McDonald's. May you now go and eat from, Ken, from Buckingham Palace. Abba, for how long can you be eating drive through McDonald's drive through and Kentucky Fried Chicken? I see you enter the palace. You will eat from there. Anybody who claps your hands, that is your portion. May you eat with kings. I said, may you eat with kings. I said, may you eat with kings. God gave them manna. Manna. In fact, they didn't know what they were eating. So they didn't understand. The Bible said that when they ate this food, there was no body feeble among them. Because of the manner they were eating. No one was weak. It was special food. God bless them. Even their clothing, God bless them from heaven. They walked out of Egypt with some clothing and when the glory of God fell on the clothes, the Bible said, nobody's shoes were worn out and their clothing were not worn out. If they were driving in cars, you can understand. But they are walking and their shoes are not wearing out. They are in the sun and their clothing are not getting torn because of the glory of God. The mystery of it is that if their shoes were not worn out, it means as they were growing, the shoes were growing with them. So if you were five years old, you were wearing the shoe and then you got to the age of 25 and you are wearing the same shoe because the shoe is growing in size with you. Mana. The food of angels. But you see, these people didn't know the value of the food of angels. In Numbers, in Numbers chapter 11, and the 4 and 5. Numbers 11, 4 and 5. Something stupid started happening to them. Numbers 11, 4 and 5. Numbers 11, 4 and 5. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lasting, and the children of Israel wept again, saying, as flesh to eat. Verse number five. For we remember the fish which we did eat freely in Egypt. We remember the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Stay on this verse. I'm about to close. I pray that heaven over your life will open. And the life of cucumbers Melons, leeks, onion, and garlic will live your life. Yeah. Now, if you go eh, Google melons, leek, onion, garlic. When the scientist gives you the health or nutritional benefits of this food, you will stay on them forever. Because in fact, they are the healthy food. When I enter any restaurant, I'm looking for the onion, I'm looking for the cucumbers, I'm looking for the melons, I'm looking for the leeks, I'm looking for the onions, and then garlic. So, scientifically, nutritionally, these foods are good. Your mind and your body tells you that these foods are good. But I'm telling you, manna, is far better than this food. May God give you manna. They were so used to this that they thought there was nothing better than this. The Lord told me, he said, these are inferior food. That the word of God, which is the manna from heaven, is better than this food. I said, I don't get it. He said, go and check the Hebrew meaning of these five. When I checked it, that word cucumber comes from a, from a Hebrew word which means hard to digest. Something that is difficult to digest. 
Some of you are living a life that is difficult to digest. You are living on salary which is hard to digest. When you get the salary, you are more than an economics lecturer. Opportunity cost, scale of preference. Every month, you become an auditor over your wife because of cucumber money. May the Lord deliver you from cucumber money. Money that is difficult to spend. Look at you. As soon as you get your salary, you get depressed. Your salary depresses, compresses, suppresses you. As soon as you get it, you say, I'm dead. Where am I going with this money? May the Lord deliver you from cucumber money. Am I talking to somebody at all? Hard to digest. Difficult to digest. Cucumber. Melon. Melon is from a Hebrew word which means having a lot of water with a flavor. So you have a water, waterful life. Full of water, no flavor. You have a big house, nothing in it. Hey! Big body, the brain is very small. Big certificate, doctor so and so, and the salary is meager. You speak huge tongues. Big tongues you speak. Bogotoku akaba. After that, you say, I want to die. Life is too miserable. Everybody say cucumbers. Come on, say cucumber. And say melon. Melon. Handsome husband with a big certificate. Intelligent, but cannot provide. Hey. Beautiful wife. Wherever she passes, everybody says, she. What a beautiful woman. Yet the pride, when she opens her mouth, you would think you have seen the biggest fool in the world. This is a wife who looks pretty, red like melon. Big in terms of stature, fashion icon. But there is no one good character like this in here. Melon, onion. Onion means to peel. Look at the way it's easy to just peel off onion. And there are some of you who are living a life that is like onion. A divided family, divided ministry, divided community. You are many. You are 12 and yet you are not together like the sons of Jacob. He said, Israel, you are like onion. Very easy to peel. Divided until a certain point when the kingdom itself was divided in two. May the Lord bring the spirit of unity among you as a people. You will not be an onion in the name of the Lord Jesus. I see you as a united unit. He said, cucumbers, melon, onion, leeks. Leeks means to be green like herbs or hay. That means the thing is green, but when the sun beats on it, it becomes dry. That is something that has no longevity. It has no durability. I see God give you longevity. Durability. Any anointing you have, you keep it forever. Any glory you have, you keep it forever. Come on, clap your hands as you receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive it in Jesus' name. Cucumbers, melon, onions, leeks, garlic. The word garlic means to exhale. And I don't think you enjoy it a lot when you are talking to people who have eaten garlic. In fact, people who eat garlic, they are the only one who enjoy the smell. <laughs> one day, a doctor was talking to me about cholesterol. Then they said, garlic is good. I said, if only it is this thing. If this thing alone is what can take care of cholesterol, I add the cholesterol to the garlic and I give it to the devil. He should keep his thing. As soon as you open your mouth, people go, and me too, I'm always laying hands on people. Receive it. Take it. Sometimes I even blow air on them. <sighs> now if I start blowing this garlic on people, they fall under the power. I think it's the power that slayed them. 
but they are dodging the breath. As soon as you say receive it, they are like, Phew. you don't even have to say it. I'm down already. Garlic is a very offensive smell. I'm not saying don't take your garlic. Go ahead and enjoy your garlic. But it means something doesn't, doesn't smell good. And you look at the life, it doesn't smell well at all. Business ministry. May the Lord deliver you from cucumbers, melons, onions, leeks, and garlic. And open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close, I like the fact that when the heaven was open, the Holy Ghost descended on Jesus. I love the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling you people, the Holy Ghost comes upon us, but we are still human beings. There are certain things in the natural we need to express the wisdom and the power that the Holy Ghost gives us. Some of those things we need sometimes are money, houses, land, property. The Holy Ghost fell on the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Holy Ghost, the Bible said, cloven tongues of fire sat on their head. Cloven tongues of fire sat on their head. The next minute, Barnabas and others who had land sold their land and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. You know how I call it. Fire on your head, money at your feet. May you receive fire on your head. And money at your feet. Because I'm telling you, when you have fire on your head and no money at your feet, when you have fire on your head, but no money at your feet, the fire will burn you and kill you. Man of God, I have seen anointing kill people because it did not go with the corresponding blessing. The anointing can be very, very difficult to manage. Because when the anointing increases on your life, it brings problems. People come into your life with problems. Just before I came to Lagos, one of my daughters sent me a message. Daddy, my school fees are in. 7,600 Ghana cities. 7,600 Ghana cities, if you divide it by about five, you get the dollars, dollar equivalent. That is about 1,000 and something dollars. And this kind of request, they keep coming. They come like water. Anointing on Jesus increases. Before long, he has to feed 5,000 men, maybe 7,000 women, and probably 2,000 to 3,000 children. The anointing on your life, the fire on your head will bring you trouble. I pray that God will put money at your feet to deal with the anointing on your head. You can imagine you have Solomon's wisdom, but you are broke. How are you going to deal with the cases that are going to come to you? So you see, it is not because we like food, we like money, we like land. And I know people say, oh, pastor, as for me, anything affordable, God gives me, I'll be fine. So everything about your life is affordable. You have an affordable car. Affordable house. Even your wife is affordable. Because you looked at all the women, you looked at the high heels, and you said, mm -mm, this one I can't afford. Finally, when you are going to heaven, you will ask God for affordable heaven where the streets are not made of gold, but they are made of cardboard. May God open the windows of heaven today.